you yet another amazing session with us by Jews. I'm Aishwarya and what you all just saw was the promotional video for Ante. That is the Akash National Talent Hunt exam. And you know that all you wonderful students who are there between 7th to 12th grade can register for this. And the registration is absolutely free. So if this is the first time you are coming to our class and this is the first time you are watching this, please do register for Anthe. It is it's absolutely free. Link is available in the description box. And there's a lot up for grabs. You can get 100% scholarship, uh, All India rank, cash rewards. Of course, there'll be a lot of mock tests that you can appear for. And the most coveted NASA trip that is going to be there where few lucky students will have the opportunity. So if you've not registered so far, now is the time. And of course, with this, welcome to another amazing session of Mission Midterms, where we are going to be doing the one short session for nutrition in plants. Welcome everyone. I can see Anik is here. Hi Anik, Hajra, Sunidhi. I can see Harshit is here. Hi Naira. That's such, a, that's such an interesting name. Sorry about that. Hi Naira. Yes, Agya is here, Zina, Harsh, Ritika is here, Nagendra, Rithanya. Hello, everybody. How are all of you doing? How was your day? Right? Did you have a good day? Are you excited for today's class? I hope all of you have your notebooks and pen with you along with a bottle of water. See, I have my bottle of water as well. I'm ready and all prepared for class today. Yes? You had a really fun day. That is great. Amazing, everybody. Amazing. Yes. Sanskriti is here. Hello. Yes, everybody's super excited. Yes, Anik, you are all of you are regular in biology class. I can see a lot of you who I remember. Hi, Ayushi. Hi, Priyanshu. Yes, everyone. Welcome to the class, right? I can see 26 of you are here in total. Now we'll wait for another two more minutes for all our wonderful friends to join as well so that we can get started with today's class. Yes? Yes, I can see that a lot of you are here and you're showing a lot of enthusiasm. That is just great. Okay, now very quickly tell all your friends to come and be part of today's class because today we will be discussing the whole chapter, the full chapter of nutrition in plants. And this is part of our 45 day plan for you to ace your midterms and raise to 100%. Now, of course, as a part of mission midterms, we will be providing you with one shot classes, right? What we will be doing where we will discuss the whole chapter. Along with this, we will be doing chapter revision and notes PDF. Now we will also be solving some exam focused important questions that are going to be there. And along with this, we are also going to be trying out some doubt solving and strategy sessions. Now, of course, as you study and you prepare for exams, there will be some doubts that you might have. And there may be some doubts that maybe in the class I may not be able to take, but you still want that doubt to be solved. So there will be a Google form in the description box. You can always send your doubts through that, right? So type it in the Google form. We are making a repository of doubts that we will be discussing in these doubt solving sessions. And now, of course, you know that to get all of this and to be regular, you need to say subscribe to our channel. So don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon for the same. And we will promise you that these 45 days will definitely be helpful. What is a strategy session? In a strategy session, we will be telling you how to plan for your exams, how to plan a timetable, how to focus, right? Some things that you might be thinking about, how to manage your time, how to, you know, motivate yourself. So we do a lot of sessions like this, right? I'm sure Saurabh sir had a class with you yesterday on the same. These are all your strategy sessions that are there. Yes. Hi, Mahi and Manu. Welcome to the class. And now, of course, all of you would have heard about the fact that we've brought back the Baiju's mini learning program because you all loved the YT free code so much that, of course, we couldn't get the YT free code per se. But, of course, we got the YT first, wherein, of course, if you type in this code, you'll, we see that the first thousand users every week can avail it for free. And you know what is there in the mini learning program. The two teacher advantage, in-depth concept understanding and a lot more. So don't worry about it. Yes, very good, Ritika. Check the description box because there's always something important. 
What do we do if we receive the order for live classes for free and it says something about... So shipping details, they ask, it's just to keep a track of it, right? So that in your name, this is who you have registered. It's just a record that we keep that, okay, you are the person who has registered. So don't worry about that. Hi, Santwana. Welcome to the class. Yes. So now everybody, of course... Five minutes into it, we have a good number of students who are a part of it. We're quickly going to get started with the class. So now one thing to remember is that I want all of you to focus on the topics that we're going to cover. And as and when, when we finish small, small chunks of the chapter, we will have a doubt board. Okay. So in the doubt board, we will discuss all your doubts and I will clarify the concepts. But I want you to make sure that all of you, right, all of you are making note of all the important pointers that I am telling you. Either have your notebook with you, you can make a note of it, or in your textbook also you can mark it, whichever works for you. Yes? So very quickly guys, a show of hands on the excitement level for today's one shot and we are going to get started. Yes? Hi Amritanch, welcome to the class. Yes? Hi Sagar. Quick show of hands for the excitement and we're going to get started, right? Yes, all right everybody. That is great, right? I have joined yesterday. That's wonderful, Agya. Wonderful. Great going, everybody. Love the enthusiasm that you are showing. So without wasting any more time, we are going to get started with today's class, which is on nutrition in plants. So now, first and foremost, what you need to understand is what do we mean by the term nutrition? Now, nutrition can be simply defined as the mode of intake of food. So, these are your key pointers. Please underline them. It is the mode of intake of food and its utilization. Now, when we talk about food, we know that food consists of various nutrients that are present inside them that we require, right? As living organisms, we require food because it is the fuel that drives our body. And in order to take this food, we must first take it in and then utilize it. And this whole process is simply what we understand as nutrition. Now, of course, broadly, when we talk about the types of nutrition or another way of saying it is modes of nutrition, you can see that there are two kinds. Wherein you have autotrophic mode of nutrition and heterotrophic mode of nutrition. Now, we know that there are some organisms which have the ability to make their own food. They don't need any other organism for food. They will make their own food and they're happy with it. And we call such organisms as autotrophic mode of, or autotrophs that exhibit autotrophic mode of nutrition. So if you have to define autotrophic mode of nutrition, it can be defined as a mode of nutrition wherein organisms prepare their own food, right? So we see that they prepare their own food using simple substances. Yes, so they use very simple substances and they prepare their own food. And can you quickly give me an example of an autotroph, right? So we call such organisms as autotrophs. You can make a note of this as well. Quickly, everybody in the chat, give me an example of autotrophs. Very good, everybody. Green plants. Yes, everyone focus on this when you are saying plants. Specify the fact that we are talking about green plants are common examples of autotrophs, right? Yes, green algae as well. Let us specify the fact that we're talking about green plants. Yes, so this was all about autotrophic mode of nutrition. Very good, everybody. I can see the answers. Now moving on to heterotrophic mode of nutrition. Now in heterotrophic mode of nutrition, we see that this is something wherein they cannot prepare their own food right? But rather we see that they are dependent, right? So they are dependent. Oh my God, I forgot the spelling in between. Yes. So they are dependent on other organisms for food. And we call such organisms as heterotroph, uh, such organisms to exhibit heterotrophic mode of nutrition and such organisms as heterotrophs, right? Hetero means others and trophos means nutrition. Yes. Please change the pen color. Yes, yes, I will change it. I will make it. I think it's a little thin today, but I hope it's clear now. I will change it. I'll put a brighter color. All right, everybody. So this is a very important thing. And of course, most animals come under the category, right, of heterotrophs. 
So these are the most common examples because we know animals are dependent on plants or there are some animals that are dependent on other animals for food. Yes, very good examples that are coming in the chat. Now, first and foremost, we will focus on autotrophic mode of nutrition. And of course, we saw that green plants have the ability to prepare their own food. Very quickly, what is the process by which green plants prepare their own food? Most important concept in this particular chapter. Yes, what is the process by which green plants prepare their own food? Very good, everyone. Very good. Yes, very good. Photosynthesis. Yes. So photosynthesis is the process by which green plants prepare their own food. And if you break this word down literally, right, we see that photo means light and synthesis means to combine, right? So literally if I split it down, this is what it would mean. So how do we define photosynthesis? Because this is a definition that they may ask you in your exam, right? So make a note of this definition that you see on your screen because it has all the key pointers. And I will underline the keywords as well because your definition always needs to be complete when you are writing it. So photosynthesis can be defined as the process by which green plants will prepare their food using carbon dioxide, right? So I'm going to change this to using carbon dioxide and water in the presence of chlorophyll and sunlight to produce food which is in the form of glucose and gives out oxygen as a byproduct. So very quickly all of you make sure that you are taking a screenshot of the same or you are writing it down as well, right? Photosynthesis is a process by which they prepare their own food, right? Very, very important definition. Now, of course, when we talk about photosynthesis, right, we see that the raw materials that we require for photosynthesis are nothing but water. Now, we know that water is absorbed by the roots, right? So, we know that the roots are the parts which are present under underground or in the soil and they absorb water from the soil. And we see that through the soil, we see that inside the roots, there are channels known as channels which we call as xylem like how a lot of you are telling me that help in the transport of water and minerals and we see that from the roots they are transported to the upper parts especially to the leaves right now we also see that carbon dioxide is a raw material and we see that carbon dioxide is taken in from the atmosphere and it enters into the leaves right and we know that leaves are the site where photosynthesis takes place yes and of course, we see that for this, sunlight and chlorophyll is essential. Now, chlorophyll here is a pigment that we find and this is what imparts the green color to the leaves, right? So now, if we look at the leaves, we often call the leaves as the food factories, yes? So students, we will be seeing this term very often and they may ask you, what are the food factories of the plant? Food factories of the plant are nothing but the leaves that are there, right? Very good, everybody. Very good. I'm reading all of your answers and comments, of course, and I'm seeing that you all have a good understanding of it. Yes. So now, of course, we know that through the xylem, the water and minerals will get transported all the way to the leaves and it will reach the cells of the leaf. Now, we know that carbon dioxide, right? Carbon dioxide from the surrounding enters into the leaf through the small openings that you observe here known as stomata. Now as you can see here these are openings and they are surrounded by these kidney shaped cells known as guard cells right and guard cells will regulate the opening and closing of the stomata right and we know that the carbon dioxide will enter and they will reach the cells of the leaf and we know that inside these cells there is a cell organelle known as chloroplast right. So we see that inside the chloroplast, we will find the chlorophyll inside. And here we see that the whole process will take place, wherein we know that carbon dioxide, so I'm just writing the chemical equation, carbon dioxide and water will combine in the presence of sunlight, right, and chlorophyll. And here we get glucose, right? So the chemical formula of glucose is C6H12O6. So glucose has your oxygen, hydrogen and carbon. And of course, we get oxygen as a byproduct 
and of course we see here that there's some amount of water vapor which gets given out. Now here what happens effectively is that the reason why we say sunlight is essential. Sunlight is the ultimate source of energy, right? We always call sunlight as the ultimate source of energy or solar energy to be the same. And here solar energy is getting converted into chemical energy. Yes, so here we see that inside this glucose, it is getting stored, right? And that's how we see that the plants have the ability to prepare their own food where now this glucose gets utilized to obtain energy. And we know energy at the end of the day is required to carry out any and every activity. Yes, so this is exactly how photosynthesis takes place. I will move aside so that you can take a screenshot. This is not a balanced equation, students. You need to balance your equation. I will do that. Yes, quickly take a screenshot, everybody. All right, everyone. Very quickly now, of course, I taught a lot of it. But are we clear with photosynthesis? I will be taking questions now. Yes. Difference between chloroplast and chlorophyll. I'm going to write this down because this is very important. So chloroplast versus chlorophyll. Now, as you can see here, chloroplast is a cell organelle, right? So we know that every body, like all living organisms are made up of cells. So inside the cells, we find many tiny structures known as cell organelles. So chloroplast is a cell organelle. Now, inside this chloroplast, we will find a pigment, right? We will find a pigment known as chlorophyll. So chlorophyll is a pigment while chloroplast is a cell organelle. Yes, harsh, it is called as a plastid, right? What is glucose? Glucose is a kind of carbohydrate. So I'm going to write all of this down so that later in the session PDF also you will get this. So glucose is a type of carbohydrate. And we've learned about carbohydrates, right? They're nutrients that give us energy. And this glucose has carbon, it has hydrogen, and it has oxygen in it. Yes? Is there space between guard cells? Yes, stoma is the small opening. So if this is the guard cell, right? We know guard cells are these bean-shaped cells which are there. The small opening is what we know as stoma. Yes. If a stem is green in color, does it mean that chlorophyll is there? Yes, of course, it can. So if stem is green in color, it is because of the presence of chlorophyll, yes. But let me tell you one thing, okay? Now it also depends upon the kind of cells that make up the stem, right? The kind of cells that make up the stem might be a little bit different from how the cells are there in the leaves, right? And of course, if you see, the amount of chlorophyll will also be different. So even if they do photosynthesis, as much as how much the leaves would do, the stem may not be able to do, right? No, 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 in this you will get it, uh, Naira, don't worry about it. Can all stem? No. Green stems have that ability. Yes? Green stems have that ability. Point of difference between xylem vessels and phloem. Okay. For those of you, this may be a little extra, but I'll just still go for it. So, we have xylem and we have phloem. Right? Now, xylem and phloem are nothing but some transporting tissues that are there. Or I would simply say they are structures which are present inside the plant that help with transport. Right? Now we see that xylem is responsible for transporting water and minerals, right? So they will transport water and minerals from where? From the root to the upper parts of the plant. So it will be in the upward transport, right? While on the other hand, when we talk about phloem, we see that phloem here is responsible for transporting food materials. So this glucose and everything that is getting produced, right? We see that all of it that is there will be transported by the phloem. So they will transport it to the upper parts of the plant as well as the lower parts of the plant. Shival, for differences between parasites and saprotrophs, can you please wait for just a few minutes? We will be covering it in just a bit, right? Yes, all right. If we boil leaf in water, color is changed. Why does that happen? So when we boil leaves in water, what is effectively happening is that there is a color change because the water, and by boiling it, we are getting, we're getting rid of it. We are getting rid of the chlorophyll that is there. Sorry, I got stuck there. So we're getting rid of the chlorophyll, right? So we get rid or we boil it in water, then followed by we boil it in alcohol just to get rid of the chlorophyll, to decolorize it, right? Okay, can we get that question? Can we just scroll up a little? Um, yes, Mahi's question was on, can plants prepare their food by artificial sources of light because solar energy is considered as light energy? If so, why not? That's a very interesting question. 
and it involves a lot of physics also. So I wish Saurabh sir was also here to help me out with this. But let me tell you, in artificial light, it is not that plants cannot perform photosynthesis. They can. But it's just that, which is why if you see there are plants which are there indoor also, right? You have indoor plants. How are they managing to survive? You provide them with water and you keep them under a good light source. They will be able to survive. But the kind of light matters, right? The kind of light. Because when you say light energy, there are pockets of light. And when directly exposed, I'm not going too much in detail because that would require a lot of physics as well. But when directly exposed to sunlight, they get more amount of it when compared to say artificial light, right? Why only prepared in car? Why only carbohydrates is prepared? See, your raw materials are carbon, carbon dioxide and water, right? So basically the components that are there when they are coming together, we see that we get carbohydrates. And they use these carbohydrates to prepare the other things like proteins and all of that that is there. So I hope I have answered most of your questions. You've asked me a lot of interesting questions right now. Yes. How do plants make food from glucose? So we are getting to that point in just a bit. Uh, so let's just, you know, sort of talk about that. The cells do die, actually. When you boil it, the cells will die. That is there. Parasites are heterotrophs. Yes, very good. What is pteridophyta? Pteridophyta, they are a kind of plants, right? Wherein we see that they don't produce seeds, but rather they produce spores. I'll be giving you an example very soon, Dhanu, don't worry. I hope I've cleared. How do plants trap sunlight inside glass jar? I am not getting a question. How do they trap the sunlight within the... You want to know how the light is trapped within a glass jar or you want to know how the plants are able to take it? Because they are able to, they are exposed to the light, right? So sunlight will definitely penetrate and come in. Yes. Oh, all right. What is a food vacuole? Food vacuole, we'll talk about it in nutrition in animals. Yes. My name is Aishwarya. Function of vascular tissue, one last time. Yes. Xylem and phloem are vascular tissue. Xylem is responsible for absorption of water and minerals. So from the roots to the upper parts of the plant. And of course, phloem is responsible for transporting food materials, right? And here we see that food, mater uh, food materials is tra transported to both upper parts as well as lower parts, right? What is the need? Yes, very important point. Very good, Mahi. So now we know that in plants, right? Very good. So we know that glucose is produced as a end food material. But we know that excess of glucose gets converted in the form of starch. Right? And we see that that is how it is stored in plants. Right, So it is for, stored in the form of starch. Now why are they stored in the form of starch? Now you think about if you had, so I'll give you a simple example. Imagine if you had a raincoat. Right, I'm sure all of you have raincoats at home. right? Or if you don't have, you would have seen a raincoat. We normally wear it outside and um, we, you know, wear it and we go out when it's raining. Now we have some foldable raincoats also, you know, sometimes what we can do is after using it, you can fold the raincoat and you can pack it into a small packet. Yes, how many of you have seen this or are you able to imagine this very quickly? I want all of you to let me know. Give me a quick yes or a no. I'll be answering this question. Don't worry about why plants need nitrogen and rhizobium bacteria. We're going to cover that next only. Very good. Yes, a lot of you are telling me yes. So now think about it. You have a big raincoat and you can keep it at home also. But imagine if I fold that raincoat, it becomes easy to store, right? That is the same logic that you can apply for when you have lots of glucose molecules. Because what happens is that glucose is like, imagine they're all like this. But when they become into starch, we see that they become more complex. They all come together and they form this starch molecule. And it helps with storage. That is why we see that excess glucose gets converted to starch in plants, right? Even in our body, if there is excess glucose, it will get converted so that it can be easily stored within the body. Yes, makes it more compact. Yes, everyone. So are we clear with the concept of photosynthesis? Yes, are we clear? For those of you who are asking me questions on nitrogen and on heterotrophic mode of nutrition, please, please do, you know, uh, Hold it because we are going to be discussing that. Which state of matter? They are food particles, right? So they will be, that's a very interesting question, but they will be in solid, right? Chemical components that are going to be there. It's a very interesting question, Mahi. Yes. Are we clear? Very quickly. 
Steps of photosynthesis. We have discussed already, guys. Are we clear with steps of photosynthesis? We started with water getting absorbed, followed by carbon dioxide entering, right? So we've discussed all of that. I hope now that part is clear. So what we had discussed were the steps of photosynthesis. All right, everyone. Very good. It is crystal clear. For those of you on heterotrophic mode of nutrition, don't worry. I'm jumping to that part next. Okay, very quick question, everybody. Carbohydrates are synthesized by plant that are synthesized by plants during photosynthesis consists of what? You have four options with you, right? Very quickly tell me nitrogen, carbon, oxygen, oxygen, hydrogen, carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, carbon, or none of the above. Very quickly, everyone. What is there in carbohydrates? We know that the glucose that we got was a combination of carbon dioxide and water. So there are three things, right? We discussed three things. Yes, very good, everyone. Very good. The correct answer here is option B, right? It has oxygen, carbon and hydrogen because glucose formula is C6H12O6. So there's your carbon, there's your hydrogen and you have oxygen. There is no nitrogen. Because you see, nitrogen is something that is required by the plants or they take it from the soil. So let's move on to the next part of it very quickly. Yes, I know it was an easy peasy question. Very simple. Now, of course, we know that we've learned about how plants require or how they produce their own food. But the thing is, glucose alone is not enough for the plants. They require various other nutrients. So you have nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, uh, of course you have carbon, hydrogen, oxygen as well. And you have micronutrients like calcium, manganese, magnesium and all of that, right? Now when we talk about nitrogen, we know that nitrogen forms an essential component of proteins, of DNA, vitamins and even chlorophyll. So nitrogen has a very important role to play. But the thing is, nitrogen exists in the gaseous form, right? We have nitrogen in the air that is there. And there is 78% of nitrogen in our atmosphere. But sadly, the plants cannot utilize it directly, right? So we see that they will not be able to utilize the nit nitrogen directly from the atmosphere. Which is why there is a need to provide it with nitrogen. Now normally what happens is that in the soil, there are of course dead and decaying matter, right? So we will find dead and decaying matter. And we see that the bacteria and the microbes that are present in the soil, they will act on it, they will break it down and naturally some nitrogen will be obtained like this. But in order to grow these plants, right, we also see that we can provide it with nitrogen. For example, we can add fertilizers and manure. Now fertilizers are artificial chemicals which are produced in the factories which have rich in nitrogen along with phosphorus and potassium. Manure is what we just discussed. We can provide, we can add vegetable peels, maybe, you know, some dried leaves and we can add in some of the bacteria and of course we see that it will be formed from this organic matter and it is obtained from the dead and decaying plants and animals and it, it, it can be used to replenish the soil. Then of course we have our leguminous plants which have the nitrogen fixing bacteria and we know that there are some bacteria that are there, right? So for those of you who are wondering, what do we mean by nitrogen fixing bacteria, right? So what do we mean by this term? Nitrogen fixing bacteria. Now we see that these bacteria have the ability, oops, let me just change this. So we see that these bacteria have the ability to convert gaseous nitrogen or nitrogen that we find in the atmosphere, right? And they will convert it into a usable form, which can be utilized by the plants, right? Yes, rhizobium is an example of the same. So now we know why nitrogen is important and how we can provide the plants with nitrogen. Now there are some plants which grow in nitrogen deficient soil. So naturally we see that there are some parts of the world wherein we see that there's not enough nitrogen which is present in the soil. And we see that such plants get modified and over time they are formed or they are known to be known as the insectivorous plants, right? So in this case, we see that in such insectivorous plants, in order to get their nitrogen, they are dependent or they feed on insects. Yes. And in order to feed on these insects, we see that their leaves are modified into traps and they release digestive juices that can feed on these insects. So they get their nitrogen from the insects because they're not able to get it from the soil. 
and we see that Venus flytrap and of course we have pitcher plant which is also known as Nepenthes which is an example and we see that once they are trapped we see that they once the insect is trapped inside the pitcher they will release these digestive juices that will break or that will affect and kill the organism and thereby they will be able to get the night they'll be able to get the nitrogen now of course before i go ahead here's a quick question for all of you plants grown in nitrogen deficient soil adopt dash nutrition for their nitrogen deficiency only what more do we call it very good everyone very good it's a very simple question it's nothing but insectivorous mode of nutrition now very quickly do you think that these insectivorous plants because they feed on insects they cannot do photosynthesis yes or no do you think they will be able to do photosynthesis i know i know they're very easy questions can they do photosynthesis yes or no they do yes ha ah, so this is a very common misconception right now we know that insectivorous plants are found growing on nitrogen deficient soil right so now because they are found growing on this nitrogen deficient soil they need nitrogen but this does not mean that they can't do photosynthesis they can do it but partially which is why we often refer to them as partial autotrophs or we will call them as partial heterotrophs because they can do photosynthesis but they are not able to get their nitrogen so are we clear with this concept yes everybody very good very good yes all right everyone the chat looks very quiet today right are we all bored with photosynthesis is that what it is yes all right good to go why can't they grow in nitrogen sufficient soil so i'll tell you what the thing is when we talk about insectivorous plants right naturally they were found growing in such plants so you imagine there was this area where there was not enough nitrogen lot of plants did not manage to survive but over time and due to you know various changes and adaptations that have taken place they managed to change themselves in a way where they trap these insects right and insects have nitrogen in them so they will take it yes so this is over time we're talking about how they are naturally found now of course we know that there are various techniques in which maybe we may be able to grow it here and there why can't why can nitrogen not be utilized in the form of gas yes very interesting questions right very interesting question so before i answer this question can any of you tell me why is it that plants cannot utilize the nitrogen when they have guard cells and they have stomata why is it that you know nitrogen has to go through this process very quickly can any of you tell me and another very important thing we know that stomata is a point through which uh, you know your carbon dioxide will enter but your oxygen that is given out as a by product will also exit out through the stomata which is why we say gaseous exchange takes place yes all right oh that's okay santvana please come back and watch the remaining session they don't it needs nitrites and nitrates okay ravi we had discussed in stomata right those bean shaped cells are guard cells okay question is why is it that gaseous nitrogen is not being utilized when carbon dioxide and oxygen is getting utilized as a gas why should nitrogen you know be fixed why should we you know give them through manure or fertilizer plants have no specialized organ they have stomata for gaseous exchange no so how can we say they have stomata we'll not say organ but they have a specialized structure for gaseous exchange okay i think some of you are a little confused with this question i'll explain this okay not a problem it's a very interesting question nitrogen isn't in the soluble form now see plants right they have the ability to utilize carbon dioxide to utilize even oxygen right they have that ability now the thing with nitrogen is chemically if you look at this composition versus this composition nitrogen is little hard to use directly okay now it's because this nitrogen as a gas as a chemical is very stable highly stable compound and we also often refer it to as an inert gas also right it does not react with anything 
unlike oxygen which we know is required for combustion right and we know carbon dioxide as well it has a lot of properties that are there hydrogen is an inert gas so even if the when we say gaseous exchange takes place it doesn't mean that only carbon dioxide will enter and nitrogen will be waiting outside no nitrogen will also enter and it will also come out like that it will go unutilized plants don't have the ability because of the fact that it's an inert gas the chemical composition is not something that will not be able for the plant to use directly which is why we see that the bacteria that are there they have some special chemicals which can act on this nitrogen break it down and then convert it we see that plants don't have that ability so are we clear with this when is the session ending in about 10 minutes 10 to 15 max it's already 7:50 can you explain this once again yes nitrogen is an inert gas and it's highly stable right and we see that it cannot be directly utilized by the plants because plants don't have the necessary chemicals or the necessary things that will help in the breakdown of nitrogen that can be used which is why we see that we need you know either nitrogen fixing bacteria that are there or we may require you know some uh, we need to add it separately yes so that they can utilize inert means it will not react it will chemically not react with anything are we clear everybody quick show of hands i like how all of you are so patient you're asking me doubts you're being so vocal about it yes are you enjoying the class as well let me know in the chat very quickly i'll be telling you dilip in just a bit yes all right everybody quick show of hands Okay everybody yes yes i'm getting to that point All right we're going to move to the next and the last part of today's class so let's all stay focused in the class yes everyone very good so now of course we have looked at autotrophic mode of nutrition yes and we looked at photosynthesis need of nitrogen right and now we are going into heterotrophic mode of nutrition Now when we talk about heterotrophic mode of nutrition we know that this is a mode of nutrition wherein organisms are dependent on other organisms for food right and here we see that they such organisms are known as heterotrophs now of course in heterotrophic mode of nutrition also we see various types we see symbiosis we have parasitic mode and saprophytic mode now when we talk about symbiosis or what i would also say as symbiotic association right you can write this down very important we see that this is a kind of association where organisms help each other out or they benefit one another right so it's like being it's like two best friends they help each other out at all times so they benefit each other so now of course the most common example of the same is lichens which is a symbiotic association of algae and fungi right now here we see that algae and fungi help each other out let's see how now we see that for fungi now a lot of you are asking me what is the difference between fungus and fungi fungus is a singular form fungi is plural simple as that okay now when we talk about the fungi we know that fungi are non green plants or non green structures or organisms that are there and we see that they cannot prepare their own food if they are non green they cannot prepare their own food but algae on the other hand are green right or they are green organisms which means they have the ability to do photosynthesis now what happens is that algae will prepare food and in turn fungi will provide shelter to the algae and thereby they help each other out and this symbiotic association of algae and fungi is what we call as lichens now another example of the same is the rhizobium or the leguminous plants that are there Now we see that leguminous plants. Now a lot of you might ask me, ma'am, what do we mean by leguminous plants? So let me write this down. Leguminous plants, right? Now these are plants which have these long bean-like, you know, fruits that are there, which we call as legumes. So the fruit or the fruit that we get at the end of it is what we call as legume. So if you see peas and beans that are there, are all examples of leguminous plants. now in their roots right we see that there will be some bulb structures that are there which we call as root nodules and inside these root nodules we find a certain kind of bacteria that is nothing but rhizobium yes so in the root nodules of leguminous plants we will find rhizobium 
Now, rhizobium here has the ability to fix nitrogen or we also call this as a nitrogen fixing bacteria that will convert our gaseous nitrogen into soluble forms that can be absorbed by the plant. On the other hand, we see that the bacteria is helping the plant by get, making it rich in nitrogen, it's making the soil rich in nitrogen, which is beneficial for the plant. But what in turn the plant will do for it is it will help in, you know, it will provide shelter for the same. So these are two examples that you can make a note of when it comes to symbiotic association. Now next up we have parasitic mode of nutrition. Now in parasitic mode of nutrition we see that parasitism is where one organism is entirely dependent on another organism for nutrients. And it will be found latched on to it, it will found taking away all the nutrients. So here it's like a robber, you know, barging into a house, taking away all the money and everything from the house. Wherein we see that at the end of it, the house owners are left with nothing, right? They've lost a lot of it. But the house is still there. It's just that whatever there inside is gone. So you can keep this simple example for the same. Now we see that cascuta is a common example that exhibits parasitic mode of nutrition. And we see that this cascuta that is there, right? They have these structures known as hostoria. Right, so the spelling is right here, I'm not writing it, I'm just going to mark it as H. Now this hostoria, what it will do, if this is the if this is the plant, right, this hostoria plant will, or this hostoria structure will penetrate into the plant and it will start to suck the nutrition. So think about, you know, how sometimes there's like a sucker and it's just taking away everything from it. It's kind of like that. And we see that the plant on which it is found growing, this green color plant on which we have cascuta growing, so don't get confused. This yellow color thread-like structure. So cascuta is a yellow color, yellow, thin, slender plant. So what is found growing as a thread or a vine is cascuta. And this green color plant is what we call as the host. So this is very important to understand. And the reason why at the end of the day cascuta is acting as a parasite is simply because cascuta is not green in color. They cannot make their own food is why we see that they act as a parasite. And yes, Rafflesia, which is the largest flower on earth, that is also a parasite. So we see that the parasite is an organism which is dependent on the host organism for food and it will take away all the nutrients, but it will not ever kill the host. Yes, always remember it will never kill the host organism because if the host is gone, then we see that, then we see that there's no longer, you know, it will no longer be able to survive, right? Its source of nutrition is gone. Now, last up, we have saprotrophic mode of nutrition. Now, saprotrophs that are there. Yes, Rakesh, I'll explain this in once in just a bit, right? Now, saprotrophic mode of nutrition is one wherein we see that these organisms are found growing on dead and decaying matter, right? So, we saw earlier also that there are some organisms which will be found growing on this dead and decaying matter and they will feed on it. We say that they exhibit saprotrophic mode of nutrition and we call such organisms as saprotrophs. And the most common example is that of fungi. Now here as you can see we have bread, right? And this bread is very stale and old and it's gone. Now what we observe is that there's some, you know, patchy 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 things which are growing on it. This is nothing but fungi. And we see that this fungi will release some digestive juices that will break down these nutrients in the surrounding and then they will absorb it. And yes, examples are mushrooms, you have, you know, rhizopus or bread mold that is there. Yes, so these are all examples of the same. So now with this, we've had a look at all the different types of the different heterotrophic mode of nutrition. Very quickly, everybody, give me your question. So far, are we clear with all the concepts that we have studied? Thank you so much, Arnav, that all the concepts are clear. What is the difference between hyphae and mycelium? All right, Dilip is asking me a lot of interesting questions today. Hyphae versus mycelium, right? Now, this might be a little tricky for others who may have not because I've not taught this concept per se in the other concept sessions. Now, fungi, when you look at it structurally, right? We see that they are multicellular, which means they're made up of many, many cells put together, right? Now we see that in such organisms when they are thread-like, no? When they are thread-like and when many cells come together like this and they form a thread-like structure, we call it as hyphae.
बट नाउ वेन देर आर मेनी थ्रेड लाइक स्ट्रक्चर और अ नेटवर्क ऑफ हाइफे इज वॉट वी कॉल एज अ माई सीलियम राइट सो आर वी क्लियर विद दिस विल द ब्रेड रिलीज फाउल ओडर Sometimes not, right? So it depends on how you store it as well. But normally, an odor will not be there. Why do only leguminous plants require rhizobium for nitrogen? Now, it's not that only the leguminous plants have rhizobium. It just so happens that over time, and like I told you, right? These are a lot of natural changes that have taken place over time in plants. We find rhizobium in the leguminous plants, but it's not that nitrogen will be only for that. The soil in general will get enriched with nitrogen. Yes, whatever the leguminous plants will require, they will utilize it. But normally, we see that after cultivating leguminous plants, the soil will get enriched with nitrogen. Okay, um, difference between host and autotroph. All right. So this is a very interesting question. Host. So host is nothing but any organism on which a plant or an, on which a parasite will obtain its nutrients. Now here I gave you the example of cascuta, right? And cascuta is obtaining its nutrient from some other plant. But we have also seen leeches, right? Have all of you seen leeches or heard about leeches? Very quickly, can you tell me? Yes. Have we heard about leeches? Yes or no in the chat? Yes. Very good. Very good, Ritika. Yes. I will answer your questions, everyone. I'll try my best. If not, see, guys. If I miss out on one or two questions. Add it in the Google form, right? I told you we're collecting all of it. Yes, of course. In case if I miss out on the questions, you can always add it in the Google form. We'll have another class. We have a specific doubt solving class also. So don't worry about it. So leeches, if you see, they will obtain or they will suck the blood from a human, right? Or maybe any other organism. And here this human is also a host. So host is any organism from which a parasite will obtain nutrition. But an autotroph is an organism that will prepare its own food. So are we clear with this? Yes. Are we clear? How does Rafflesia? Rafflesia will grow on the host organism. And in order to grow, it will suck the nutrient. Right? Can we stick to questions which are specific to nutrition in plants? Right? Um, can, can we just scroll to that question a little above? Okay, in parasitic mode of nutrition, when organisms take all the nutrients from the host plant, so host plant's nutrients don't finish. Why so? Because see, as and when it, so when we say that it is taking nutrients, it's not that all at one go, all the nutrients are gone. It will slowly and gradually keep taking. And simultaneously, right? So if you take our example also, let me simply give you an example. If you take an example of human beings and leech. We are also constantly eating food, we are taking care of our nutrients, we are doing what is necessary to grow and to survive. But when the leech requires food, it will come, it will suck the blood and it will go. So it is kind of like that with a parasite as well. It will take the nutrients as and when necessary. Right? And continuously the plant is also growing and developing. So it is not that all the nutrients are gone at once and the plant is gone. It is a gradual process. Right? Yes, we are heterotrophs. And everybody, very quickly, you can take a screenshot. This is a quick summary of all the important concepts that we had studied in this particular class, right? So, of course, with this, we come to the end of today's class. For those of you who still have doubts, please add your doubts in the comments uh, in the comment section. And, of course, you can add it in the doubt-solving session. Thank you so much, everyone. Now, before I wind up, I hope that all of you have made a note of 7th of August. Because we have a very important announcement coming on the 7th of August. And this date, 14th of August, is going to change your life. And if you're still not part of our Telegram community, it's time for you to be a part of it. Because you know that we're going to come up with a lot of interesting things with homework poll questions. A lot of interesting things coming up in your way. And you know that no matter what, we've got you covered. Right? Just like how you've got us covered. And in the comment section below, if you have any doubts or in case, if you like the session and you want more such classes, let me know because you know I always, always check your comments. Yes? So, of course, show us your love by liking this video, sharing it with your friends and subscribing to our channel. Thank you so much, everybody. You've been such a wonderful bunch of students. I will be conducting it very soon, Sanskriti. Don't worry about it. We have Nutrition and Animals to complete and it's one shot along with some important questions followed by which I will be doing this. Yes? All right, everybody. With this, we 
come to the end of today's class. Thank you so much for being a part of it. Hoping to see you very soon again. Bye-bye and have a nice day.